Oh, I need the one on poultices from your kitchen put up on the screen, please. So we're going to be talking about basically some food poultices, things that you can find commonly uh, in the kitchen of most people. Now, the only one that is not so common anymore these days is castor oil, and that's the last one we're going to talk about. But uh, it's something that back in the day, a lot of children would have to take a spoonful a day, right? <laughs> to help with constipation. All right, there we go, poultices. So as we um, go on this, as always, it is, all right, is it gonna stay? I'm not a doctor or a nurse, can't take what I say as medical advice. All right, here we go. Um, but before we do, I always like to give a word of prayer before each lecture, so let's just pray real quick. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for yet another opportunity to share in these simple and natural remedies and means that you have given to us. We thank you for all that we learned about charcoal, and right now I pray that you'll be with us as we talk about how to use uh, different foods that you've made in poultices and apply them to our bodies in a skillful way. Just thank you, Father, for the amazing God that you are, and we invite your presence here with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. A quote from Second Selected Messages says, Natural means used in accordance with God's will bring about supernatural results. Amen. And I believe that the most important part of any and every treatment is saying a prayer over it. If you simply apply a charcoal poultice or a ginger poultice to someone and say, do you mind if I pray for the poultice? You know, some people might not want you to pray for them, but you could pray for the poultice, right? And ask God's blessing on it because it's that those natural means and we know it's being used in accordance with his will. And so he can work in and through that to bring about supernatural results. What is poultices? A lot of people have not heard that word, right? When I first heard it, I wondered if it had something to do with chickens and turkeys, you know, something like poultry. What in the world? But it's nothing to do with that. Actually, it's simply the def one of the definitions is that a soft, moist mass of material, typically of plant or flower, applied to the body to relieve soreness and a whole lot of other things, as you're going to see, and inflammation and kept in place with a cloth. So you smash it, crush it, blend it, you do something to this plant material, you grate it, and then you wrap it in a cloth, put it on your body, and that's a poultice, okay? Very simple. So I'm gonna be making each one as I talk about them, and so that you can see how easy it is uh, to make them. All right, so we're gonna be talking about these seven different ones. Onion, ginger, cabbage, potato, cayenne pepper, garlic, and castor oil. All right, so all of these, um, there's more than just eating these things. You can apply them to the body if you know how to do it and what to use it for. So we're gonna start with the onion. Onion poultice, there is the cooked onion poultice and the raw onion poultice, and you use them for different things. So the cooked onion poultice is used for earaches and infections and for boils, all right? So how you prepare the onion is you're either gonna bake it or steam it. So wrap it up nice and snug in some foil, and then you can bake that until it's soft. How long that's gonna take depends on how large, this is a large onion, so it's gonna take a little while, right? If you have an onion half this size, it's not gonna take as long. So just hang on. We're gonna, um, we're gonna bake it until it's soft, or we're gonna steam it until it's soft. But you are going to do it whole and in the skin. You do not cut the onion open, okay? Because you want it to be um, keeping all of its good onion properties, right? Those sulfur compounds. So that's why I have this, it's in the skin and it's whole and you just wrap that up and you either bake it or you steam it, all right? Can you eat it fresh? This is not for eating. <laughs> this is for making a cooked onion poultice. 
Well, I mean, you can eat it fresh if you want to, <laughs> but it's very good for you. Um, it has what you're gonna do once you have it cooked. So this is not, but we're just gonna pretend that this is now nice and hot and cooked. And we're, I'm gonna use this uh, glove because a couple months ago I almost cut the tip of my thumb off um, cutting this up. So you're gonna take that cooked onion and you're gonna cut it in half where you see the rings, okay? So you're cutting it crosswise. You see those rings. And this other half, well, if you've got an infection or an earache in both your ears, you can use it both halves uh, on the ears. Or if you're only using one half, then you can use the other half in cooking or something. Use it up that way, okay? But what we're going to do with it, you're not going to just stick that on your ear, okay? <laughs> Just wait for instruction, all right? So what you're gonna do is, say it's my right ear, I've got an infection, an earache in there. I'm gonna get a little bit of that onion juice into a spoon, and once that has cooled enough, I'm going to then pour that into that infected ear. And then I'm going to, some people will put uh, garlic oil in their ear or different things like that. Then I'm going to wrap this half of an onion in a towel. And I'm gonna put that over that ear. And I'm either gonna lay down uh, with it and just have it setting there, or if I wanna be up and about and around, you can wrap the head, like you see that little boy has a strip of cloth wrapped around it so he can be wearing it up and about. Or if you've got both onions on you, you can have onion mufflers on your ears, right? <laughs> and wrap it on your head. And the thing is that you want it to be a comfortable hot. Okay, so you want that heat of the onion coming through the towel. So, you know, how many layers of towel you have depends on, this is a pretty thick towel. If it was a dish towel, it'd be a lot thinner and I'd have more layers. And you just gradually, um, you have it on there and then as it cools, you take a layer away and put it back on, and as it cools more, you take more of the layers away until the onion has completely cooled. Can I ask a question? Can we heat that after the microwave? No. No. No microwave. No microwave. Okay. What's the degree in the oven? The degree in the oven, at least 350 um, to 400, somewhere in there. Yeah, so typical baking. No. So once it's cooled off, it's done. You can no. Well, you would steam it whole to cook it in the first place. You don't ever cook it in the water because that's going to lose the onion properties into the water. Okay? So that's why you bake it or steam it. No. No. You don't put it in any, yeah because the water could still get uh, into the foil. So you don't want that. Is, is that the, I can't hear from this ear at all. Uh -huh. Is that open your ear? Yeah, it depends on what's clogging it. What yeah, outside. it depends on what's causing that. Mm -hmm. And so it's something where you can try it and see, but if it's like you can't hear out of that ear because of damage or because of wax or, you know, different things. So it depends on the reason um, for it. But for this, yes, you're going to use it until the onion has completely cooled, okay? And then you throw it away. It's done. It's the sulfur compounds in there. It's why you want to cook it whole because you don't want any of those uh, compounds being released until you cut it open and put it on your ear because that's what's going to draw out that infection, that, uh, what's causing that achiness, all right? And so if you do an onion poultice to your ear and you get relief, that means that that's your body telling you, yes, this is working, keep doing it. Uh, if it doesn't do anything, that means maybe that's not the issue. Try something else, okay? Your body will talk to you. It'll tell you what it works and what doesn't, okay? And so sometimes even people will do this and their pain will go away. But then 
that later that night or later the next day, it'll come back. Well, that means since they got relief from that once, that was working, it's what the body needs, do it again that next day. And sometimes people, depending on the severity of the earache or the ear infection, one time may take care of it. Another lady, she had something going on and she would do it and then the next day it hurt again. So she did it again the next day and the next day. And she did it for seven days because the pain kept coming back. But after the seventh time, the pain went away and it stayed away. Okay, so you just keep repeating it until the pain is gone. All right, and then you don't have to, you know, get antibiotics and go to the doctor and all of that kind of stuff unless you do this and it's not working or it's getting worse kind of thing, you know? Yeah. But this isn't going to help with the fact if you don't keep your ears clean. Okay, so this is for ear aches and ear infections specifically. It can be. It can be. Yeah. No, just leave it in there. And if you want to lay on the other side for any of the juice to run out, yeah. that's fine too. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm The properties of the onion is, can go through the towel. Yes, it can. And so it's the combination of the onion and the heat. And it's, yes, drawing that. And so this is very good because a lot of children get uh, ear aches and ear infections. And you can just uh, give them some onion mufflers <laughs> and have them run around <laughs> kind of thing. Until it's completely cooled. Yep. And then it's lost all of its heat, then you toss it. That onion is done. As hot as you can stand without getting burned. A comfortable hot is the goal. All right, so we want a, a comfortable hot, no burning allowed <laughs> kind of thing, right? Um, so that is for how you use it for ears. For boils, you use it slightly differently. You cook it the same way, in either baked or steamed, and then you cut it open crosswise the same way. Then you let it cool for a little bit until it's uh, cooled enough to be able to put directly on the boil. Okay, you're not gonna wrap it in a towel. It goes directly on the boil, on the skin, and then you uh, put some plastic wrap over that and then wrap it like with an ace bandage or something to secure it on you. And you can wear that for several hours. You can wear it all day or you could do it all night if you wanted to. It doesn't matter if it's cooled down uh, for, that, for boils. For the ears, it's only until it's cooled. But for boils, it can be um, past its cooling stage. Um, but you just wanna make sure that you can put that on there uh, without burning your skin, okay? Yeah, a uh, boil's like a large kind of pimple with that infection uh, stuff piled up in there and it draws out the infection. So you may have to repeat it the next day to continue drawing it out. Depends on how large it is as to how often you have to do it uh, until all of that is uh, pulled out. Well, we don't have time to talk about that. <laughs> no, it can be other issues. So used raw onion poultice in using it for uh, the respiratory system, for respiratory congestion and infections, okay? So this is raw onion, and I'm gonna put this back on again. And you can see on your handouts how that it is used uh, on the chest, on the neck, and on the feet, okay? So we're gonna talk first about the chest and the neck, and then we'll go to the feet. And you're simply going to get about half an onion. Can I interrupt you for one second? Mm -hmm. So we can get through this quickly because there's so much to cover. 
I'm going to pass out paper and pencils. Please write your questions down, and then we'll ask questions at the end, okay? There you go. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for giving them paper to write them down. <laughs> All right. So you're going to chop up this onion and that's plenty for now and then you're going to simply wrap this up I, eat, I like to use paper towels just simply because I can then throw them away um, once I've done the poultice but if you want to uh, be more conservative you can just put it on a cloth and that you can wash and reuse as well. Um, either paper towels or cloths, doesn't matter, it works the same. So what you're going to do is once you've got all that chopped up, for the chest, I like to use a paper towel about this size because you're going to wrap it up to where it can then be the size over the chest area right there for any chest congestion, wheezing, coughing, uh, tightness, that kind of thing, okay? So I've done this several times on myself and on my mother and it really helps to open things up. It helps open up the breathing, the lungs, even helps the sinuses too at the same time. Um, and you're just going to put that onion, this is quite a bit of onion, uh, in the center there. And you're going to fold it over to make like a little pouch. So that all that onion is contained, okay, there. And this is the side, it's already getting a little wet with the onion juice. That's the side that's going to go on your skin, okay. So if you have really sensitive skin, you might want to put a bit of oil on the skin first and then put the onion poultice on you. I don't want to smell like onions, <laughs> okay? Um, but you can wear that for several hours. You can lay down with it and just have it sitting on you. Um, or if you want to be up and about, you can t get some paper tape or something and tape it down on you, cover it with some saran wrap to keep all the onion properties um, going into you instead of out into the air. So what I do is I'll get some saran wrap and I double it over and that makes it easier to work with, okay, instead of the single layers. And then you're simply going to fold it down to the size that's going to be a little bit bigger than your poultice and you'll get that over it and then you can put that on your skin and you can even tape that plastic down to you and it's just going to hold that on there okay and um, like i say you can wear that for several hours um, some people will wear it overnight um, on your handouts i say not to wear it overnight only because it can be irritating on this for the, it to be on the skin that long okay but for some people, they find that it doesn't irritate them. So in that sense, if you want to try it, go ahead. But just be mindful of it. It could create a little bit of a rash um, and irritate the skin to be that long. But um, And when you're done with it, you take it off, throw it away. And if you need it again the next day, you do it again the next day. Or you can do it morning and night if you're sick. And that just really... Man, when I did that, my chest was tight, and, and I also, my sinuses were completely stuffed, and I had to breathe through my mouth as I slept because I couldn't breathe through my nose. You know how that misery is, right? Well, when I did this right before I went to bed, it opened everything up, and I could breathe all night through my nose, no problem, like I wasn't even sick. Raw onions, yes. Yes. Some people will like to lay down with it and then put a, um, a hot water bottle over it. And that will help to drive the onion properties uh, into the chest as well. 
But again, the plastic over it is just helping all that onion to go into you instead of out into the air, okay? So that's the reason for, for sealing it in that way, like that. Can you put the onion directly on the skin? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, as I was thinking, if you were tell, I would think if you put water on it, it would absorb better in the skin. Oh, can you put onion directly on the skin? I mean, with it wrapped up in the towel or the paper towel, yes, you can. But you, you have to have something to contain it because otherwise onion pieces are just going to go falling all over the place. So you have to wrap it up in something. It's, oh yeah, it goes through the paper towel, for sure. It works through the paper towel. Oh yeah. And I did it for my mother when she was wheezing. Uh, you could hear her breathing and it was not sounding good at all. She was sick. She got what I had and it just opened her right up, took the, all the wheezing away and she could breathe uh, easily. Okay, so for the neck, you do the exact same thing, except you see I took half of that paper towel away and now I'm making it more narrow, longer and narrow, because you want it from ear to ear, okay? And the front of the throat. This is for sore throats. And it's also gonna help the sinuses as well. You're gonna do the same thing. You just wrap that up to where it's uh, contained all together in there. And then that's the side you're gonna put on the neck, okay? Um, and you wrap some plastic around that, make that half size, put it over it, and wrap a sock around there, tie a scarf around there, whatever, something that's going to hold it in place. And you wear that for several hours. And that's going to help with your sore throat. All right. So what, how do you wear it on the feet? This is something that's excellent. Putting things on the feet, you'll find, is a big part of natural remedies because feet have the largest pores of the body. And so everything, all those properties go into the bloodstream more quickly. And you can use the essential oils on the bottom of the feet. For example, they'll say, oh, if you're having a hard time sleeping, then put some lavender on the bottom of your feet before you go to bed. On the bottom of the feet, you would think they're tough and what's it going to do, right? <laughs> but it's because it has those large pores. And so that lavender is going to get into your system. Same thing with the onions. You chop up some raw onions. You put a couple tablespoons or so into a bag, uh, like a produce bag like this. And then, you know, more or less, depending on the size of the foot. You put your bare foot on top of those onions and then slip a sock over that. Do the same thing to your other foot and go to bed. Wow. All right, very simple to do, but you're going to be, remember to write your questions down. Um, I'm not taking them during the lecture. Um, you can, you're gonna notice that within two or three minutes, you're gonna taste onion in your mouth, just from having it on your feet, right? <laughs> um, anything that you put on your feet, but especially those potent things like onions and garlic, you're gonna be tasting it. And you wear this overnight um, on your feet. This is really gonna help with coughing. If you're sick and you can't sleep because of coughing, put onions on your feet, and within a few minutes, that can calm it right down and you can go to sleep. Barbara O'Neill, she, she teaches on these different poultices and she tells how the, uh, her grandson, one time when she was visiting, her grandson was sick and they had put him to bed, but he was coughing, coughing. And a half hour later, he's still just coughing, coughing. So she said that, get him out of bed. We're going to put onions on his feet. So they got him out, got onions on him, put him back to bed within five minutes, no more coughing. He fell asleep. So then when child falls asleep, then parents can fall asleep too, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so this is something that it helps open up the lungs, gets the breathing. It'll affect the lungs and the sinuses um, as well. 
And you can also do it during the day. There was a lady who was uh, two friends and they were going like four to five hours away to help with an event. They had a, a, a drive and one of them started feeling sick and she was like, oh great, am I even gonna be able to, to do this event? I don't feel good. So she got onions on her feet and her friend drove to the event while she just sat in the passenger seat, rested and had those onions on her feet and for those four or five hours. And by the time they got there, she was feeling so much better and she was able to then uh, do what she went there for in helping out with that event. So it's something day or night that you can do, but typically a lot of times it's just really helpful to do that at night to help with that coughing that keeps you awake. And of course, when you're sick, sleep is so important and um, coughing and sleep don't go together <laughs> very well, do they? So that's something that um, can be done as needed and as often as needed. Can I ask you about the part? No, write your questions down, please. <laughs> okay, um, and there's other uses for onion. It's an odor absorber. So like you can slice up an onion, put it on a plate or in a bowl and put it in a freshly painted room uh, to take up all the paint odors. You can put it in a moldy room. And if you've had a cut onion there for a while, the onion itself will start turning black um, from the things that it's ad absorbing in the room. You can use it for a sick baby. Slice up a raw onion and stick it close to their head, but out of reach where they're not gonna be getting into it. Um, and they'll be breathing in the onion properties and that will help them to get well faster. Uh, and help their breathing as well. And you can also make cough syrup from it um, with onion and honey. And that's simply having a glass jar and you put some chopped onion at the bottom, then put a teaspoon or so of honey and then a layer of onion, honey, onion, honey. Now if you fill that whole jar and top it with a bunch of honey and then screw the lid on and let it set for 24 hours. During that time, all the onion properties are going to be uh, leaching into the honey. That honey is going to get watery, but then after that 24 hours, you strain the onion out and you keep that honey onion water and that's your cough syrup. And you keep that in the fridge and you take a teaspoon as needed uh, for coughing. Some people like to add some other things in there, like you could put a drop of eucalyptus in it. You could add a little cayenne pepper to it. Um, you could add some peppermint to it. That also helps with soothing a cough, but just that onion and honey property is going to be your cough syrup. You could not use that for babies under one year old because of honey, um, but uh, for children and adults, a teaspoon as needed. All right, so ginger is next. Ooh, I already changed it, that's right. Ginger, this is another super simple um, poultice to do and it is used for joint pain and inflammation, such as arthritis, gout, an injury, back pain, back ache, um, and for recovery from joint surgery. So anything having to do with joints, if you think, they sound the same, ginger for joints. It's that j, j sound, right? So you're gonna use ginger for joints. And all you do is you're simply going to grate some fresh ginger, onto your paper towel or your piece of cloth. And how much you grate all depends on what size of an area you need to cover. You know, an elbow is gonna be a little smaller than a knee and a toe is gonna be a whole lot smaller <laughs> than the lower back. All right, so we've got a good portion here. Nope, didn't peel it. It's just raw ginger straight from the store. Okay, and you're gonna get all that in the center. And I like to have it about a quarter of an inch thick or so. I don't know if you can see that, all right? And again, you're just gonna fold over all four edges Get that ginger contained. 
And you can see this side's already getting wet with the ginger juice. That's the side that's gonna go on your skin, okay? Now ginger is excellent. We use this all the time at New Start for inflammation. Um, if people complain to us of painful joints, we put a ginger poultice on them. If that doesn't work, we try charcoal. So one of those two is gonna work. And some people respond to one and not the other. And so you just have to, to try them both, see what their body responds to. My mom had a really painful knee one time. Didn't know, she didn't do anything to it, it just started hurting. I thought, okay, it's a knee, it's a joint, I'm gonna put ginger on it, so I would do that. Oh, it would help, but it always came back pretty quickly. And so after two or three times of doing that, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try charcoal. I did one time of charcoal, took it all away, never came back. So she responded to charcoal. Whereas I've had other clients who, okay, I tried some charcoal on them. Eh, didn't seem to do much, all right. So I tried ginger on them, took it away, didn't come back. So they responded to ginger. You know, so that's why I say, you work with your body, it'll tell you what works for you, okay? Um, sorry, did you say a ginger, I mean, a, a charcoal poultice? Poultice. Poultice. Like we had in the last lecture, yes. With Used for pain. I just made one in the bag. Oh, yeah, the plastic bag. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. So this is going to go directly over, um, say, we had arthritis in the hands, okay? So it's going to go over that, and then, again, you're going to have your plastic that you make uh, down to size just to cover over the edges, and then you're going to secure that with some kind of bandaging and it's gonna hold that on there. Four to five hours is what I generally tell people to do. Now the thing about ginger is that if there's inflammation in that joint, pretty soon, anywhere from a few minutes to an hour or so, that your skin is gonna start feeling like it's burning. And you're gonna think, oh, the, the ginger is burning my skin. The ginger doesn't burn your skin. It'll make your skin feel warm, but it's not gonna make it feel hot. What's happening is the ginger is drawing out the inflammation from that joint. And as the inflammation is coming out, it's uh, meeting up with that ginger and it's causing that really hot feeling in your skin. So if it gets really hot, that means good news, it's working. It's pulling that inflammation out, okay? If you do this and it doesn't get hot, it means one of two things. Either inflammation is not your problem, you need to try something else, or that inflammation is so deep that you need to do it again, and at the second application, you might then start feeling that heat coming out, okay? So um, this is, if some people can tolerate that heat, and it'll tend to go in waves, kind of up and down a bit, and some people can stand it. Other people, it just gets so hot for them, they can't stand it. If that's the case, take it off. You don't have to suffer through it, even if you only had it on for one hour, okay? Go ahead, take it off, do it again the next day. It'll draw some more inflammation out, okay? And then take it as long as you can do it and do it again the next day until you do it and you don't get any more heat from it, okay? Does that make sense? All right, that is your ginger poultice. Super quick and easy. And it's a way that you can also, if you have a whole bunch of ginger, you can grate the whole thing up and make a bunch of these and put them in a freezer bag and freeze them. And then you have them ready to just grab as needed. And you don't have to make it every time. That's how we do it at New Start, is uh, we make up two gallon bags of poultices and we can just grab them and defrost them and apply them quickly uh, that way. It makes it handy. And you can see there is other tips and uses for ginger. Um, you could also freeze the ginger and then just grate it frozen. That takes a little more elbow grease, right? And there's a little more energy there to grate frozen ginger, but it works. And again, if your skin is really sensitive, or if you're putting it over an area that has a scar, then you would want to put some oil on the skin first or put some oil over the scar because the ginger will irritate uh, scar tissue. 
Uh, but if it's got oil on it, it'll be fine, okay? So just like a little olive oil or something. And the other uses for ginger there, you can see using ginger tea for internal inflammation, warming the body, nausea, and morning sickness. All right. So next is cabbage. And we're going to, let's see, come on. There we go, cabbage. So cabbage, it's a little small for me to see, I'm gonna read it here, is used for joint and soft tissue pain and inflammation, such as the same things you use it for ginger, sciatica, strains and sprains, mastitis, lymphedema, also for blood and lymphatic congestion, wound healing, including ulcers uh, on the skin, like diabetic ulcers, that kind of thing, uh, skin infections, sunburns, um, Cabbage is one of those uh, wonderful things for internally, right? We all know how good cruciferous is for us, and, but it's so good externally as well. A lot of women know about using cabbage for mastitis when they get breast fever, um, but you can even use it. I have a friend who had unexplained breast pain, and she'd had it for about a year and it just wouldn't go away, and she didn't know what was causing it. And so she heard me talk about cabbage, and she decided to try this uh, for her pain. So she did, and she said she applied it once for a few hours, the pain went away, and never came back. And all you're going to do is take your leaves of cabbage, get your doubled uh, plastic wrap, and you're gonna put the leaf on that. You cut out that s thick center vein, okay? Remove that, and how much you do, let's see, I might want a little bit more. Just depends on how large of an area you need to cover. All right, what you wanna do is to somehow crush or bruise that cabbage to where it's releasing its juices. Okay, so you can use a meat hammer, you know, and pound it. If you're going to do that, I would cover it with another uh, piece of plastic or paper towel to keep cabbage from flying everywhere. I speak from experience. <laughs> uh, the way I like to do it is just use a rolling pin, and you're going to crush that. And you can see it's already starting to get wet, right? So you're just going to keep doing that until that cabbage leaf gets nice and soft and malleable and crushed. And I might keep doing this for a good minute, okay? But I'm not going to do that right now. But we're just going to say we've got this all crushed and juicy, okay? And then you're simply going to apply that to whatever area. If you've got a sunburn, like she's got that bad sunburn there, you can just whoop, flip that on you. And that I have heard of people getting sunburns to where it's like blisters. And if you get that cabbage on there, there was a lady who her skin was starting to blister. She got a cabbage poultice on it, took all the blisters away and it healed very nicely. And I think without even peeling. Um, but depends on the severity of the sunburn that you have, but it's just very healing for that. That uh, lymphedema you see, you would just wrap that. I would do the upper leg one day, the lower leg the next day, upper leg, lower leg. Start with the upper leg because you want to be moving the lymph fluids uh, above first before you try start moving those fluids upward. So wrap the, the thigh one day and then wrap the calf the next day and to go back and forth that way until that uh, lymphedema is is reduced or gone and again it can partially depend on what's causing it there's different causes of lymphedema as well um, but once you've worn that cabbage you tend to wear for two to six hours twice a day or overnight okay and it doesn't necessarily matter if it's red or green cabbage, but green cabbage does have more of the anti-inflammatory properties, okay? 
So just to, to be mindful of that, and it doesn't stain as much as the red cabbage would, okay? So that's why I more recommend using the green for those two reasons. Um, and just like the onions, it doesn't matter what color onions it is. It doesn't matter on that, but for the cabbage one, it is best to be the green cabbage, all right? And once you've used that, you would throw it away and make a fresh one for your next cabbage poultice, okay? Um, once you know on any of these poultices, once you know what they're good for and used for, you can have fun combining things, okay? I had this one lady come up to me afterwards and tell me how that she would make a cabbage poultice and then she would drizzle some castor oil over it and sprinkle some charcoal powder on it and then apply it. And that was her cast. I forget what she used it for, but it was something specific where it was using the properties of all three of those uh, aspects and combining it into one poultice. So, you know, and you'll notice that a lot of these are good for inflammation, right? So you can combine two or three of them and see how your body responds to that uh, instead of just using one. Um, it might help it work even stronger to combine it in that way. All right, so two to six hours, twice a day or overnight, you will see there's an alternative poultice for stronger poten potency. That's basically just blending the cabbage up in a blender um, and then applying it, but that is much more wet and juicy, so you have to be sitting or laying down during the whole time you wear it, but you don't have to wear it for as long. It's a shorter uh, time frame. So if you can be laying down or sitting for that time, then you can uh, do it the blending way. Otherwise, just crush it or pound it. All right. Potato poultice. I love potato poultices. They are so handy and they're so gentle. You can use them anywhere on the body. Potato poultice is used for soft tissue pain and inflammation, such as sprains and strains, ingrown toenails, tissue injury, also for sensitive areas of the body, like the eyes and the lips and the genitals, and for drawing out infections, splinters, debris, heat from burns, all of those kinds of things. Potato draws, at the same time it soothes. And um, I have a few different stories. Like I'm gonna tell you three different stories on potatoes, poultice. We had one client who she was, uh, was working with some of the stretch bands that we had and uh, it broke, which then it broke as she was stretching it out and that metal piece that was at the handle instantly just smacked the back of her hand and made a bad, uh, painful experience there. So what we did was right away, we got some ice on it for 20 minutes first, and then I went and I made a potato poultice. You just take a potato, doesn't matter what kind of potato, a raw potato, um, and you just make sure there's no clumps of dirt in the eyes or anything, and you're simply going to grate it onto a cloth or paper towel and wrap it up and apply it over the area, just like all of the other poultices. Now, potato poultice does get pretty juicy, um, so you wanna make sure that you wrap it well and seal it well so that all those juices don't eventually start making a mess uh, on you. And I like to have a poultice box and I have these tools and stuff in it. I like to have a hand grater. Yes, you can do all these things in a food processor, that's fine, but you never know when you might be out of electricity um, or if you're traveling or something like that. It's just handy to have uh, things that don't require electricity to be able to make your poultices. All right, so we've got the potato there in the center of the cloth just like everything else, and we're gonna fold it over, make, kind of contain that into a pouch so that all the shredded potatoes not falling everywhere. And this is the side that's gonna go on the body. Okay, so I made a potato poultice for this lady that injured her hand. After she iced it, I then put that poultice over her, 
I put some plastic over that and I wrapped it with an ACE bandage and she wore that for several hours. She was my client, so when she came in for a treatment the next day, my first question was, how's your hand? And she, she got out and she's like, I wouldn't even know that it was injured. There was no swelling, there was no bruising, there was no tenderness. She was like, that was amazing. <laughs> but it's, we got it right at the initial injury. You know, if you try to do that to an injury the next day, you're not going to have as dramatic of results. It's going to help with the inflammation, but it's not going to prevent the bruising or, you know, things like that. So the sooner the better that you can do it. There was a story of a little girl that got um, severely burned. Uh, it was either boiling water or boiling oil that got spilled on her chest. And I think she was about nine years old or so. Well, her parents knew about using potato to draw out the heat from burns. So what they did was, of course, after calling for emergency to come, I think it took them 10 to 15 minutes for the EMTs to get there. But they started grating potatoes with the food processor. They grated potatoes and they spread that over the whole burn area. And within a few minutes, those potatoes were hot because it was drawing that heat out. So they carefully wiped off the top layer of the potatoes. They didn't get everything because they didn't want to then um, get her skin in there with it. And they put more fresh grated potatoes on. Within a few minutes, those potatoes were hot. So they kept taking it away and reapplying fresh ones until the, the EMTs got there. And while they were checking her and getting her vitals, they kept taking that off and putting fresh potato on. They ran out of potatoes, so they went to the neighbors and got their potatoes, and they grated up a big bowl of it and took it in the ambulance with them on the ride to the hospital and kept changing out those potatoes. I think she got to the hospital about 45 minutes after her initial injury, and they whisked her in, the doctor examined her, and he came out and he looked at those parents and he said, what did you do? She should be far worse than she is because if they had not been doing that, the heat from that burn would have been going deeper and deeper into her and then starting to damage uh, in her internally. But instead, the potato was drawing the heat out of her and she didn't get that internal damage from that severe burn. Um, so it's just amazing stuff. And the last one, I said I'd tell you three stories about potatoes. <laughs> I have a, a coworker who she used to work in a commercial kitchen and she had to open a new five gallon bucket of the cleaning chemical that they would put in the dishwasher. And as she opened it, it splashed some of that chemical into one of her eyes. And she read the label and it was such that it could have blinded her. And so she did the, the rinsing out with flushing with water for you know 20 minutes kind of thing, but then she wasn't finished with working. So she finished her job, she went home. By the time she got home, her eye was getting red and irritated and starting to swell and um, just being, getting painful. She had heard about potato poultice, but she thought it was kind of quacky. Uh, but then she thought, what do I have to lose? I could lose my vision, I'm gonna try it. And so she made one up, she put it over her eye, and she, you know, secured it with a headband or something, and slept with it overnight over her eye. And the next morning, she still had some redness and swelling and, and pain, but it was better. And so over the next three days, at the times that she was not working, she had a potato poultice on that eye. And after the third day, all the pain was gone, the redness was gone, the swelling was gone, and she did not lose any of her vision. And um, so it's just potato is, is an excellent poultice uh, to utilize for all number of kinds of things. And it's just very gentle, you know. You can't put a ginger poultice over your eye for inflammation, right? <laughs> but you can put potato, okay? Whoops, I already... So cayenne is our next uh, poultice that we're going to talk about. So potato poultice, you would use it, uh, wear it for several hours, or you can even do it overnight. Cayenne pepper poultice, that is used for neuropathy, for cold feet, poor circulation in the legs and feet, sickness prevention, and hypothyroidism. 
All right, so that hypothyroidism, that is um, the only one that is used on the neck. And if you're on medication for low thyroid, then you would want to do this with your doctor's uh, knowledge about it because you would need to be getting your levels checked um, to see if your medication might need to be adjusted. But, you know, with any natural remedy you do, use common sense, okay? <laughs> use common sense. So all you're going to do is drizzle some oil onto a paper towel or a piece of cloth. And the oil is simply to help the cayenne pepper to stick. Because you could put water on there, but once the water dries, then the cayenne pepper is not going to be sticking anymore, right? Sure. So you've got oil on there. This could be for someone's foot, okay? So you can make it about the size of the foot. If you're doing it for the neck, then I would use half of the paper towel, and I would put that oil right there in the front that would go from ear to ear again, okay? So now what you're going to do is you're going to just sprinkle a good solid layer of cayenne pepper on there, which I'm not going to put the whole thing, but you can get the idea. So there would be a little more than that. For a foot, it'd be about a half a teaspoon sprinkled onto that. And you're going to make two of those, one for each foot. And you're going to put your foot, your bare foot, down onto that, wrap that plastic over the foot, and then slip a sock on and do the same thing to your other foot. Okay, if you're doing it for the neck, then you're going to put that uh, directly on the skin over the neck from ear to ear. Put your plastic around there, tie a scarf around it or tag a sock around it, and you're good to go. Now, for the neck, for hypothyroid, that is, um, only worn in the morning, only worn in the morning. Because if you wear it that later in the day or in the evening, that's going to stimulate and wake up your thyroid and you're not gonna sleep that night, okay? Because cayenne pepper wakes things up, okay? It's a blood stimulant and it gets things moving and going and alive, okay? And so that's the whole point with helping to wake up your thyroid. But when you wake up your thyroid, you wake up you, <laughs> all right? So that's in the morning only. But anywhere else on the body and wearing it over the feet, that can be day or night. I have done this at night. Um, I just wanted to see what it was like and if my feet were going to burn or anything, if I noticed uh, something with it. <coughs> and I wore it and I didn't have any heat to my feet all night long until the wee hours of the morning, like, you know, five o'clock or so. And then I started feeling my feet, oh, they're starting to feel warm. But they weren't burning hot because you think I'm putting cayenne pepper on my feet, they're gonna burn all night. They don't. Um, but what I did find was if you have good circulation and you do this, if you have good circulation in your legs and feet, you do this overnight, and the next morning you take it off. I take it off in the bathroom, and I wipe my feet down, get the oil and the pepper off my feet before I go walking around on it, okay? You don't want to be having uh, slippery, oily feet <laughs> and um, staining your flooring or slipping on your flooring, okay? So go in the bathroom, sit down, clean it off, and then you're good to go. Well, that next morning... A few hours after I took that off, my feet were on fire. <laughs> and I discovered that, that that means you have good circulation. Um, diabetics that have neuropathy, uh, lack of sensation in their feet, they will do this like every other night. You don't do it every night. Uh, on your handouts it has every other night. Um, do that on the feet to increase the circulation in the feet and help to reverse that neuropathy. 
or to help keep healthy circulation in the feet if you uh, don't have neuropathy yet. Um, that is an easy way to uh, increase that blood flow down to the lower extremities, which diabetics often have a hard time with. Um, and so you can also do it to the hands if you've got some neuropathy going on in the hands. Do the same thing, and then you can just like um, slick, slip a mitten glove over it as well and sleep with your hands like that and that'll increase blood flow to your hands while you're sleeping, okay? Now, if you do this and you don't have good circulation in your feet and legs, then your feet will not burn the next day. They won't feel like they're on fire, okay? Uh, that's only if you have good circulation. And it's, uh, I used it as well in another case, not medically, but we had a severe snowstorm that knocked out our electricity for 11 days a couple years ago in December and January, and the house was 46 degrees. And um, that was not too pleasant. Cold feet all day, every day, you know, kind of thing. So I tried it once, and I slept with this cayenne poultice on my feet at night. And again, my feet were not hot during the night, but the next day, they weren't burning either. They were just nicely warm all day long because I was in the cold. And um, so that helped with uh, warming up my feet, getting that good blood flow there in that cold house. So you can use that uh, also for sickness prevention, like it says there. And that's something that you're going to uh, repeat as needed uh, if you need to. So for... Uh, neuropathy every other night for cold feet or poor for circulation it would be every three nights and that kind of thing um, for sickness prevention that's just until that threat is over okay so there's other uses for cayenne down there that you can see I'm not going to go through all of that but it helps with thinning the blood it helps uh, with a sore throat it helps increase the circulation it helps to heal stomach ulcers and you think, oh, but it's pepper. I can't take that with a stomach ulcer. Cayenne pepper is not in the same family as the jalapeno pepper and the black pepper and all these irritating uh, peppers. It is, those are a nerve stimulant, whereas, as I said, cayenne pepper is a blood stimulant. All right, it's a completely different effect. And so the effect it has on ulcers is it's drawing the blood there to that ulcer so that it can heal, okay? And there was a lady who, you know, most people with ulcers are too afraid to try it because they think it's gonna make their stomach burn. But one lady um, did try it and she thought it was gonna burn, but she said as soon as that cayenne pepper hit her stomach, it was just very soothing and calming. Um, so you can uh, just be mindful of that. And you can co combine cayenne pepper with any other herb to increase its effectiveness. Okay. All right. So on to garlic. Garlic poultice, super simple. It's used for the immune system, right? We all know how garlic is good. It's used for fighting sickness and boosting that immune system. So this is one of the quickest and easiest ones that you can do. You just want a long strip of cloth uh, of some kind, and you're going to take a clove of garlic. You would do one for each foot, all right? This is, again, on the feet. We love natural remedies on the feet, don't we? <laughs> it gets those good properties into your system. And you're going to slice. You do not chop, you do not crush, you only slice that garlic. Ooh, ooh, all the way to the front. <laughs> Thank you, my runaway garlic. And you're going to cover one row of that, okay? So I've got that one clove there across that piece of material, and you're going to cover it with one layer of the cloth. 
and that will keep the garlic oil from burning or blistering your skin, okay? It doesn't need to be thick, but you do, and it doesn't need to be more than one layer, but you need that one layer there to protect from blistering the skin. So once you've got that, then you're gonna put your bare foot over that garlic, and you're going to just wrap that cloth around there and slip a sock over that, do it to your other foot, and go to bed. And that's your garlic poultice, and that is getting the properties of the garlic into your system without even having to eat it, <laughs> right? You can use this for babies. When they can't eat that garlic, but they're sick, um, you can do a garlic poultice to their feet and get that garlic into them. And you're gonna be tasting that, that garlic on your tongue <laughs> after a couple minutes of it being on there. Now, most people will do this at night and you don't have to worry, uh, you know, with using garlic and onions on your feet, your bed is going to smell a little bit like garlic and, or onions, <laughs> whatever you do to it. But um, you can also wear this during the day and be walking on it and pressing in the garlic in, into your feet. But I would suggest, I have not tried that. I would just suggest that you have a dedicated pair of garlic shoes. <laughs> for that because that is going to make your shoes smell definitely like garlic, all right? But some, sometimes children can do that and run around on that garlic to help with ear infections or any kind of immune system stuff they've got going on. Um, but if you don't want to be walking on it, then just do it at night on the soles of your feet. Yeah, keep spiders away. <laughs> And you'll know that all that garlic has gotten into you when these pieces are kind of shriveled up and dried up and shriveled, okay? So garlic has that, the com a large component of it that's so good for you is the allicin, uh, the C-I-N, it's spelled a little differently than the name, but it's called allicin. And that is what is so very good for your immune system, okay? And you want to... You want to be able to, um, if you're going to be eating it, then for you to chop or crush uh, your garlic and let it set for 10 minutes and then eat it. During that 10 minutes, it's releasing the allicin. So then you're going to get a lot more benefit for your immune system that way. And it's better to do that than it is to cook the food in it, cook it in the food. For example, soup. If you cook the garlic in the soup, then you lose a lot of that. But if you cook your soup without the garlic, and then 10 minutes before you eat it, you chop up or you crush your garlic, let it set for 10 minutes, and then throw that into your soup and eat it, you're going to get a lot more of that immune system boost uh, from that garlic. Now that soup will taste more strongly garlicky. <laughs> but if you're doing, you know, it for sickness, like I said, then um, that is, you want to let it, release that allicin. And it helps with thinning the blood and different things as well. Okay. Yes, for immune system wise. I mean, the cooked can be beneficial as well, but not as much as um, the raw after setting. Okay, so that garlic and uh, on the back of your handouts to other uses for garlic, it can, it's a natural antibiotic. Um, Barbara O'Neill says that four raw garlic cloves a day is equal to an antibiotic. So somehow that you can get that, you know, chop it up and put it on some toast with onion, and, uh, tomato and avocado and put your uh, raw garlic on there. Um, you can, I put it into some salsa and eat the chips and salsa. That's a way that I can get that raw garlic down me. Um, you can sprinkle it onto stuff as you wish, um, or you can even put a clove of garlic in your mouth and just kind of suck on it for several hours and slowly be having that garlic properties going into you. Um, you're gonna have some pretty strong garlic breath for a while, but if you're homesick, who cares, right? <laughs> if you have to go out in public, I might not recommend that method. Yeah, in a salad dressing is good too, yes. But that way you can't measure how much you're taking un unless you put it in specifically. 
All right, last one, castor oil compress. This is one of my favorites. I think potato and castor oil <laughs> are my two favorites. Um, there just is so many things that you can use castor oil for. It's, it's amazing stuff. And so we're just going to read here. Castor oil is used for any unnatural lumps, bumps, growths, adhesions, such as cysts and gallstones, kidney stones and tumors, bone spurs and calcification deposits. Also for irritable bowel syndrome, for diarrhea or constipation. And that's because it works for, you know, you think those are the opposite, but actually the castor oil goes into the body and the body utilizes it for whatever it needs it for. It, it restores balance. So if you're constipated, it's going to help get you unconstipated. If you've got diarrhea, it's going to help get that back balanced in you. Okay? So this is fully using it externally. I'm not talking about taking it internally. Okay? Only external applications for any of these things. All right? So I do have a few stories about castor oil compress as well. Um, there is, I've used it myself for constipation. And I have had issues with constipation my whole life. And I would sometimes go a, a week, I remember going about two weeks as an adult um, without having a bowel movement. And it's just been a struggle. And so then when I became Adventist and I changed my diet, I'm getting, you know, water and fiber and good healthy foods and all this stuff, I still had an issue with constipation. It's like, what's my problem? Um, so because I lectured on these things, I like to, to experiment with the things I lecture on, <laughs> right? See how they affect me. So I did that with a castor oil compress. And I'm gonna show you how to make it, but right now I'm just gonna show you what I did. I made a compress and I tucked it into some underwear and I would sleep with that uh, over my bowels all night, every night. And I did that for about a month. Well, I think it was about four days. After four days of doing that, I started going regularly every day. Not a problem. And I became very regular. And the way that I know that I did is because I remember how I said charcoal is good for a marker for transit time because it darkens your poop, right? Usually, whenever I would take charcoal, I wouldn't see it for at least a week. At least a week. When I started doing this, I would see it the next day. And always within one to two days. And I, when I saw it the next day, I'm like, how can that be? <laughs> you know, I was just not used to that at all. And um, then a f a f several months ago, my mom was reading through letters that she had written to her mom years ago when I was a baby. And this one letter, uh, I was six months old. And she was telling her mom how that I had not had a bowel movement for two weeks. And I was like, that's it. I was born constipated. You know, it's no wonder I had this problem. Um, and what caused that, I don't know. But anyways, that castor oil, uh, I did it, like I said, every night for a month. And then I got to thinking, well, what if I stopped doing this? Am I gonna go right back to being constipated? So I stopped it just to experiment. I kept regular, not a problem. And so now, if I ever get a temporary issue of constipation, I can just do a castor oil pack for a few nights and it gets me going in regular again. And I don't have to be just continuously for the rest of my life wearing a castor oil pack at night, right? <laughs> um, so that's just uh, one way that it's used. And, you know, if you've got a bone spur, people will often have a hard time walking because they'll get bone spurs on their heels or something. And it's just really painful. Well, make up a small little pack and sleep with that on your heel every night. And that's going to gradually go in and break that up. Now, castor oil, it is something that it's, it's not an immediate fix. It takes time and consistency. But it's the thickest oil there is, and so it penetrates the deepest into the body. You can't use olive oil or coconut oil or any other oil like you can uh, what you can use it, uh, castor oil for. 
um, because the other oils won't go in as deeply. They won't break things up uh, like castor oil does. And so it goes in there and it penetrates the deepest. And so that's how it, it will gradually break up those bone spurs and those calcifications. People use it for uh, getting rid of warts. Um, you know, just all kinds of different things. You can use it, yeah. Um, and it's something that you want to be mindful. This is on your handouts, but four things to be mindful of is that it's in a dark glass bottle, okay? You don't want it in plastic, and you don't want it in clear. You don't want it in plastic because it's going to start leaching the uh, properties of the plastic into the oil. And you want it dark so that it protects it from light because the light will start to d damage and destroy the lipids, uh, the fats in it. And you want it organic. This is soaking into you, folks. You want it good quality. Get organic and hexane-free. Hexane is a solvent, uh, and it's uh, what they will use to extract oils. Um, but it, it's a large component of gasoline as well. So you just want to make sure that it's hexane free. All that's on your handout, okay? Castor oil, the castor oil. And so there's different um, companies. You know, you don't have to get just specifically this one. There's different companies that carry good quality castor oil. Check your health food store. Uh, and, and sometimes if they don't carry it, they can order it for you if you can't order it online. This is Heritage Store. They have a good, they also sell it in clear plastic. So, you know, you got to make sure you get it in the dark glass. But all you're going to do is make a thick pack that you then apply to your body, either over the bowels, over the liver, over the bone spur, whatever. And you can make them medium sized, you can make them large sized, you can make little ones, uh, like I said, over the bone spurs uh, on your heels. You just make whatever size you need to cover the area that you're applying it to. And how I like to make it is with a chucks pad or an incontinence pad because it has the material side and it has the plastic side. And that will help to protect the oil from soaking through into your clothing, okay? Yes, they use the, the incontinence pads in the hospitals. You can get them in drug stores. You can potty training pads at pet stores can be cheaper. Um, but um, just kind of some kind of chucks pad. And I open it up and I cut a piece of old washcloth or something, the size of the area I want to apply it. And I put that into the middle of the chucks pad. And then I'm going to fold down all four sides and tape them, okay? And so I've got a washcloth inside of this one. And so then I would finish this out by folding it down and taping that edge down. And then there's my pack that I'm gonna apply the castor oil to this side. And having it thick means that I can put more castor oil in there rather than just something really thin, okay? And we're going to simply, now I'm not gonna actually do it, but you're gonna fill the, a third of the center of that pack. So for this large one, that's gonna take quite a bit. For this medium one, it's not gonna be as much because it's smaller, right? But we're going to fill a third of that with the oil. And then we're going to let it set for like 20 to 30 minutes so that it soaks in. Okay? Because castor oil is very thick. And it'll take a while to soak in. If you try pouring that on there and then putting that on you, all that castor oil is going to just go dripping down you. <laughs> okay? And being as it's a very thick oil, it will stain as well. It'll stain your clothing. So they do recommend that you know wear clothes you don't care about when while you're wearing this. Um, and because they say it won't come out if it gets into your clothes. I have found, praise the Lord for shout. Remember, shout for charcoal, shout for castor oil. <laughs> if you get some shout into there and uh, let that set and then wash it out with the uh, when the oil is fresh, like the day of, then it will come out. If you put it in your laundry and let it set for you know a week and then you try to shout it and set it, 
it doesn't come out, all right? So if you shout it fresh, it will come out, even though they say that it won't. Um, but you do have to just be careful with it. It's oil, and it's thick, and so it can stain. Um, this you can wear all day or all night. Some, I, I know a lady who had uh, some lumps in her breast, and so she would put some castor oil on a panty liner and tuck that into her bra, and she would just wear that 24 hours, seven days a week, 24 seven, and that gradually shrank uh, those lumps in her breast. And um, so it's just something that can be used. I, I use it, uh, I have a nasty scar on me from something. And that scar, uh, when it healed, it keloided inside. And so going across it was like a thick rope in there. And it was red and pink. And so I had made a little pack that I would just tuck into a sleeping bra. And I slept with that all night. And I did that for a couple of months. It totally took that lumpiness away, made it smooth and white. And uh, so it can help with breaking down that scar tissue as well. Uh, very, very good for uh, scars, and it talks about adhesions there. Any unnatural growth. Um, so some people will ask, well, I've got bone spurs on the back of my neck. Is it going to like break up my bone, my vertebra? No, it doesn't. It only breaks up what is unnatural. It doesn't, you know, if you put got it over your leg for bone spurs, it's uh, over your knee, it's not going to break up your, the bones of your knee. It's just going to work on the bone spur itself, okay? For warts. for warts, you just put some on a, a Band-Aid and wrap it around that wart and do that every day until it's gone. How long it takes depends on how big the wart is, how long it's been there, you know, if it's uh, old or new, all of that kind of thing. But you're going to wear it at least five hours, as a minimum, five hours, Okay. <laughs> and day or night, doesn't matter. And so the other, use for sh other uses for castor oil, there you can see um, cataracts and some glaucoma. So cataracts, oh, and before I go on, this, it, it makes it to where it's a pack that you can just reuse. Uh, every night or every day, whatever you want to do, you just reuse it until, now I myself, that one over my abdomen, I used it for a month, and then I tossed it, okay? So um, depending on how often you use it is how long you would uh, keep that pack for, and then if you need it, make another pack. Um, and as you're using it, you're going to be adding some more uh, about every two to three, two to four days, basically. You're not going to add some every day because not all of it has soaked into you in that one application. So you can use it two or three times, and then you add some more to refresh it, let it soak in, and then, you know, just do that every few days. Um, and <clears throat> so, as I was starting to say, cataracts or some glaucoma, um, some people are like, I can put castor oil in my eyes. <laughs> Actually, yes, you can. Um, a handy way to do it, this is what I've done at home, is I sterilized a glass dropper bottle and I filled it with castor oil and I use that as eye drops. Castor oil itself has a lot of good uh, nutrient properties just for general eye health. Um, it doesn't have to be for cataracts, but for cataracts, it helps with breaking up the cataracts. And for glaucoma, it depends on what's causing it. There's some glaucoma that's caused by a buildup of a certain um, a blockage of a, a duct in the eye, and that then builds pressure in the eye. Well, the, the castor oil can help to unblock that vessel. Uh, but other glaucomas caused for other reasons, uh, castor oil would not help, okay? Oil? No, castor oil, good for the eyes, good for the eyes, castor oil, not charcoal, castor oil, okay? Putting drops of the castor oil in your eyes. So um, my sister, 
She is uh, 51 as of yesterday. Well, she's for a few years has had to wear readers and she had to enlarge the font on her phone screen to be able to read. She started a few months ago putting castor oil in her eyes every night and she's been able to shrink her font back down to normal size and she's not reading, uh, using her readers and she can read it. And that's the only thing she's done is by a single drop into each eye, yes. So it's at night right before bed. Unless you're taking medicated eye drops, uh, you can't use castor oil in your eyes for 12 hours after medicated eye drops, okay? So just be mindful of that. Um, right before bed, you put a drop in each eye and go to bed. It will make your vision a little bit blurry, but you'll still be able to see. You can't read, but you'll still be able to see. You won't be blinded, you know? Um, for those that are too afraid to put it directly in their eyes, you can put a drop on your finger and then just smear that drop. You don't have to rub it in. Don't just rub it. Just smear that drop on the eyelid, put another drop and smear it on the other eyelid and go to bed. And that castor oil will soak through the eyelids and get into the eye. And it helps with the wrinkles around the eyes as well. It helps with... Uh, eyelashes and eyebrow growth. You know, some people use it in their hair because it helps with that as well. It's a little hard to wash out of your hair. But um, it's just really good for general eye health. So one of those ways, either in the eyes or on the eyelid, um, works. You can also use it uh, for dry eyes. Um, this is one of the best things. The, the company, uh, InVision, on their website, they do surgeries, cataract surgeries, and you know, they're just an eye company. They say on their website that the best eye drops for dry eyes are ones that contain castor oil. All right, they're talking about over-the-counter eye drops that you can buy, but I'm saying just go with the castor oil. <laughs> I have a friend, a coworker, who her eyes were just really bothering her at work and she couldn't you know, get away to go home to get her regular eye drops that she would use for that. So I'm like, come here, let's get some castor oil in your eyes. So I did that, put a drop in there. I went back to giving my treatments. She went back to the reception desk. I came back later, how are your eyes? She's like, I need to get some of that stuff. That works way better than my eye drops at home. <laughs> um, you can use it for in your eyes for foreign objects that get stuck in there and you just can't find it. And what is it? It's irritating. I know something's in there, but I can't get it out. Put a drop of castor oil in your eye. Keep your eye closed for a while. Let it set. And that castor oil will surround that foreign object and it'll gradually move that to the corner of your eye where you can then just wipe it out. Okay, so just a lot of, that's why I love castor oil. I got to stop talking about it. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, I don't recommend it orally. All external uses. Okay, come on. We've got one last quote here. <clears throat> says, always study and teach the use of the simplest remedies and the special blessing of the Lord may be expected to follow the use of these means which are within the reach of the common people. Simplest remedies. Aren't these simple? I mean, a potato, ginger, cabbage, onion, these things are simple. Charcoal, it can be expected. The Lord's blessings can be expected on these things because they're things that he himself created and made, and we're using them in accordance with his will and plan. And so... Um, you know, there's other foods that you can use as poultices, oatmeal and different things, but um, these are some really good, good ones that you can find anywhere you go around the world. If you go to someone's house, you're probably going to find a potato. If you can't find a potato, you're going to find an onion or a cabbage or something like that that you can use uh, to bring health and healing uh, to a myriad of different things. So I encourage you, go over your handouts. I know I'm just shooting out a bunch of information at you, um, but that's why I put a lot of it there on your handouts so that um, a lot of what I say, you don't have to try to remember, it's there for you. And there's no excuses, right? You can do this. <laughs> All right.
Okay. All right, we're going to have five minutes to, to take questions, and then it'll be lunchtime, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. With the ginger? Yeah. So for ginger, can you chop it up and put it in a bag like you did for the, the onion? So I would say for that, that would be good for plantar fasciitis or some kind of inflammation of the bottom of the feet yeah. kind of thing. Um, but you would... Uh, you probably can do it without having to have any cloth covering the ginger. So, yeah, you could grate it, just grate it, and then put it in there and wrap it and have it on the feet for foot inflammation. Put your foot in there, slip a sock over it to hold it on, to hold it on. Yeah. Another question? Yes. Can you use the castor oil on your skin or your face? Um, yes, but it's very thick. It, it won't soak in. It's going to leave you, it's going to leave, it's castor oil as well. Um, not as much. It's too thick. It's too thick. You can use it as you're sleeping, um, like around the eyes to help with eye wrinkles and with dark circles. Oops, sorry. Dark circles. Um, but it is too thick. Even in the morning, your skin's going to still be shiny from the oil. It's going to look oily. So you you want to use other oils more for just general skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, because it's an unnatural growth. It's a no. Just in on put a drop in the eye. Another thing that's good for styes is the um, charcoal infusion water drops uh, because of it being infection. So you could like be doing the charcoal infusion drops during the day and then put a drop of the castor oil at night when you go to bed to help with that sty. Mm -hmm. Oregano. Oregano is very good for all kinds of things. It is powerful for the immune system. Um, when I'm sick, I have oregano essential oil and I will put some drops in a capsule and then, you know, two to three times a day and while during that sickness to help with the immune system. I've used oregano oil to kind of burn off some warts uh, off of me as well. You have to be careful to just get it on the wart and not on your skin because it will burn your skin. Um, but uh, oregano is powerful. Yeah, very good. Yes, if you purchase a, a dropper bottle, you still need to sterilize it. I just boil it in uh, water for five minutes and it's sterilized, the glass parts. Mm -hmm. One more question, done? I have a question about the, is the oregano, I mean, it's, why we're talking, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> the lavender is effective as the onion and these poultices you were talking about. It sounded like some things were sort of interchangeable. No, lavender is used for relaxation. Oh. Onion is used for your respiratory. Okay. I'm just saying applying different things to the bottom of your feet because it gets that into your system because of the large pores. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I had a question about the org Is it important to use organic every time or just for some things? That's personal preference, really. I like to, if it's going into my body, I like it to be as pure as possible. Uh huh. Would that also with help with AFib? Help with AFib? Um, not necessarily. It's not affecting the heart as much as it is the uh, respiratory system. But then, if I have, like, if I also have congestion mm heart -hmm. would that help too? Not necessarily. <laughs> eating it, onions and garlic and all are supposed to be so good for the heart. Oh, yeah. Eating is good. Eating all of these things is good, but I'm talking about external yeah. stuff that it's used for, which is completely different than, than eating it into the system. Except you said not to do the castor oil, not to take that. Right. 
I recommend uh, external use of the castor oil because it, it is such a thick oil and you do have to be careful with it because if you get too much of it, they'll use it for not only for constipation because it gets the bowels going. So if you use too much of it, you're going to have a problem there. It also, for women, it uh, causes the uterus to contract. And so they'll use it for um, stimulating women to go into labor um, when they're pregnant. So, you know, it just, it affects the body in different ways. And so I, I recommend using it externally. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a break from the first half hour and a half for the next program. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mm-hmm. okay, so we're going to take a break for lunch. But we need to be back and start right at 1 o'clock. So we have sandwiches, we have salads, it looks like we have some fruit.